And here is the burner, all disassembled. And what I want to pay attention to and direct your attention to is a little bit. First thing you want to do is check for uh, potential debris in there. And as you can see on this particular burner here, there is actually quite a bit laying around in there. How much of that was in the orifice? I'm not sure. But uh, in basic terms, fuel comes in through the rail right there and it goes through the piezo ignition to light the fuel and then out of uh, the control valve is a hole in that hole sits a little orifice that I removed and this one here I'm not sure I can focus on it it's a 1.2 or a 12 looks like a 1.2 so out of this right here this thing sits on the back side of the burner, essentially, and I'm just holding it in place, obviously. And it's shooting that um, propane in through the Venturi neckening or, or narrowing of the, the gate here. And um, in here, I'm going to put this down for just a second so you can see the other part. You have the mixer. I call it valve whatever and, and this particular unit here will mix correctly the uh, fuel to air or propane to surrounding air ratio and which always varies depending on the pressure that you run and altitude and a lot of other factors it that goes in and gets dispersed through all of these orifices so there's been a lot of talk on, on, on the internet I suppose that well just drill them out and make them bigger well if you stop and think about that for just a second if all the gas that you have come on now has to go through this little tiny tiny hole one hole mixed with air how do you suppose when you have all of these other holes which is substantially bigger than this how would it help if you drill those out so I'm not going to argue with other people that has done it, and some claim they've done it with good results. And I'm just going to say, if you want more flow into this unit here, you probably ought to look at the orifice. Um, a lot of common, uh, what do we say, um, hacks when you take a propane stove and turn it into a natural gas stove. If you can't find an orifice, that'll make it work. Uh, generally, you just want to increase this since a natural gas has less energy and don't flow as fast as the propane does so generally speaking the orifices has to be bigger so a lot of people can drill this out with good results but then when you do that you got to be very very careful and and not be a bad idea to grab another 1.2 orifice in case you drill it out too high and or uh, you don't like the end results you can always install the original one which is the nice thing because once you're done with this little thing it's the only thing that you're modifying everything else the regulator the whole burner assembly in cast iron remains unchanged so you can revert back you just got to be aware of that once you change one item in this case the flow of propane through the orifice then you have to make sure you have enough flow of air to mix it so you get that nice clear blue flame uh, you get too much air and it usually becomes a a nasty orange uh, candle soot licking thing <laughs> that's just gonna dirty up everything so, you know, we'll, uh, we'll try this. We'll increase the orifice here in a little bit. And the whole goal here is to, uh, I have a two burner camp chef stove in my trailer and uh, I'll, I need one burner to be able to offer a little bit more output when I do stir fry. And or when it's really uh, blowing. The stove sits on the outside, uh, about three feet away from the coach. So, so heat or latent heat is, is not gonna be an issue here. Uh, but that is my goal so anyway step number one first you want to investigate like i've done clear up the interior burner i really like this particular camp chef stove that you actually can take everything apart and um, whereas of many of them are sealed and you can't do anything so anyway step number one we'll check back in a few and here is the orifice that says 1.2 millimeter on it has been uh, well, drilled out with a uh, 1.6 millimeter. So we went from 1.2 to a 1.6 millimeter. 
and that's just a matter of uh, putting it in a vise or hold it steady and nice and easy just uh, drill a bigger hole that's all it is now we'll put it back together here's the unit assembled again and uh, mind you that they're both running off the stock regulator and the coach so you can put a bigger regulator in will which will solve some of the issues here a little bit but this particular tri ring or three ring cast iron burner is at its maximum from a mixture standpoint uh, the stock one is on the left and then we have the modified one on the right they're both running with max air input and um, you can see that it's still starved a little bit of oxygen here um, or surrounding air and uh, which makes it just a little bit burning so not clean but that's okay that burner will never be used for low like this if I turn it down way low you'll see it's a little bit better which is what I should have do uh, stock one on the right hand side over here this is as much as you're gonna get out of that which is not bad but you have a little bit of wind or you really need to get something going well it's it's just simply not enough so we'll turn this guy back down here again and now you see on the right hand side so by about where you want to be well still not burning as clean as it can um, but I'll take the extra heat in comparison to the uh, the right one here at full tilt goes like that and it really is, is about getting that extra um, extra push and you can see that that's about as much as this particular burner can can handle and it's really it's really could use more air but uh, that is all what it's going to get at this particular time but I'll take that result as now I got almost twice as much heat coming out of it as I did before so anyway so here are the two different burners. The burners on the right is the uh, originally untouched burner. And uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail in a second what was done to it specifically. But you can see they're both on low. And uh, that's about as much pressure as the right hand burner can take uh, before that it starts flaming out. And this is uh, essentially an OEM. You can see that this is about as much as you can push that and then it starts pulling away and it just gets worse from there the flame will get uh, even bigger pull further away from the burner and the flame will go out so this is about what you can see on a stock on high and back on low that's what that uh, burner is going to be made for that's going to be the right hand side is going to be the slow burning one so i'll go ahead and turn that off and then we'll push the right hand, excuse me, the left hand side a little bit. Now, mind you, it's not burning really particularly good here at low, uh, but it's not meant for that. This is going to be when you do stir fry. And yes, it is pulling away a bit, as you can see, but um, this is as good as this particular flow chamber is going to do. We'll cover a little bit of what was done this one here has the stock flow chamber this one was enlarged a little bit i have cut a little bit about a millimeter and a half off each of the straight edges there so it sucks in more air and uh, as you can see this thing will now be beautiful when it comes to uh, stir frying Back on low where it will not be used because you can see there's a lot of yellowness to the flame but it'll be just fine if you're doing stir fry and that's the whole thing so that being said we'll go ahead and turn it off you can see the difference this is the regular cast iron size they're about two millimeter each of the holes in them um, a lot of the holes are not really done well from a casting standpoint it's very hard to see but there's quite a bit of uh, leftover in the cast and these are now drilled out to 2.7 millimeters so it went up 0 0.7 millimeters the orifice in here was drilled from a 1.2 millimeter to a 1.5 millimeter excuse me 1.6 millimeter so it went from a 1.2 stock in the right 
to a 1.6 millimeter. The flow chamber, you can see, yeah, you can't quite see because I left that thing on there. This thing is just meant to go full speed. And because of that, um, the only way to do this, really, you can't just drill bigger holes here. Because now you're not getting an equal amount of better flow out through the orifice. So it's kind of a combination like when you rejet a carburetor. This particular burner is meant for a certain BTU and it's designed for that purpose. But you can usually push it a little bit more. Not necessarily a whole lot, but a little bit. So the intake was enlarged. You can kind of see where it's filed nice and uh, smooth. The orifice was increased from a 1.2 millimeter to a 1.6. And then these holes were increased from a 2 millimeter to a 2.7 millimeter. And you see the results. I want to say here in the end that this is something that you obviously have to stop and think about before you do it. You can't just take a 17,000, excuse me, a 15,000 BTU burner and turn it into a 30,000 BTU burner without some form of consideration of what it is you're doing. You're dispersing, well, twice as much heat. And of course, if you're indoor, were indoor, if this was done on the indoor stove, uh, well, it would never happen because now you have the surrounding areas. But this stove here is, uh, is made outside there's plenty of ventilation through the bottom. There is a plate that will come on the bottom. The top is cast iron. It's, uh, well, about almost three feet away from the coach. So there's plenty of ventilation. There's plenty of room for things to I just say not catch on fire. But you have to be considered about when you do this because you're, well, literally playing with fire. So anyway, that's it. Once again, here's the right burner, which is now the designated low burner sear simmer not sear but simmer burner here it is on low and here it is on high so this is again what you can expect to see for uh, the camp stove ranger 2 about that which is fine until the wind really starts blowing or you can stir fry so uh, we'll pause that for just a second and here's the right hand excuse me the left <laughs> sorry the left hand burner that's the one that's been, uh, dare we say, tuned. Here it is on low, burning, you know, respectably. But you can see as soon as you turn it up a little bit, you will have a little bit of an indifference. But here's the big difference uh, in the heat output as far as what it can do. And this is on a stock OEM regulator. It comes off the coach here. So this is, uh, my goal was to see if I could get more heat out of it uh, with the stock regulator. The video uh, earlier that you see, or the, the snippet of the video earlier, was with the um, um, variable regulator. This type of thing here, uh, and a propane bottle. But I really wanted to see if I can make it work, and I think this is going to be just fine. You can see the bigger holes um, prevents the flames from pulling too far away from the burner itself. And I think this is going to be just right. You don't necessarily need a whole lot more than that. And and I can live with it being a little bit of an orange flame because this will not be the, the simmer burner. That will be the one on the right hand side here. So this is going to be perfect for stir fry. Even though it's a little bit of a yellowy, I'll take that with a more heat output. And as you can see, there's plenty of room. This is as far away as it gets from the camper. So there is actually plenty of room there. See you later.